Yo guys, what's going on? Blossom's back and welcome back to another episode of Top Drives. Now, first things first, all I want to say is I got a haircut. I finally got a haircut. Shout out to Tracy, my hairstylist. It's just, it feels so good to get a haircut again. For those of you that don't know, I couldn't get it cut for like five straight months because of the lockdown. So finally, I can get my haircut. I'm finally fully vaccinated. It's been two weeks since, so I can get a haircut. Anyway, today I want to review the Japanese uh, Pro Tour JPT. I'm so used to saying JPT nowadays. I'm gonna review the Jap uh, JPT carbon fiber for the ACRX final. So let me know down in the comments below if you want me to just review JPT as a whole, as a carbon fiber in a general sense, but today is all about the final. So obviously you can see here a lot of fantastic legendary slick tires and off-road cars under hot garbage. That doesn't mean that they're hot garbage. In fact, ironically, every car in here, if I was going to rank the JPT pack as a whole in general, would probably be, be in tier one. Uh, maybe Maybe besides the Infinity and maybe the Nissan Xterra, but everything else is probably going to be in tier one. So there is a little bit of irony in this, but like I said, I'm going to be reviewing this pack in terms and only in terms of the final. So final track sets are super easy. I don't need to post it. It's super easy. It's five twisty wet. It's five twisty wet with three mediums, and there's one track set where this is zero to one hundred because that's basically just Hutch saying, "Hey, we want you to use a Nissan GTR." Well, regardless. Regardless of that, we're going to review the pack. So let's say that you are opening this pack straight, strictly for the final, like me. <laughs> I've already opened all 15 by the time I made this video. I've already made all 15. I'll post those videos after this one, but obviously I need to get this video out first so you guys know what is the absolute best hand you can use for the final. So in hot garbage, we have very not hot garbage cars. We have a bunch of slick tire beasts like the Nissan R uh, R381 and of course the R390 GT1 race car. Now I expected that this final was going to make this car useless. It's pretty obvious that this car was going to be used for this final because obviously Hutch, you know, they're big brain sometimes. They want us to spend money on packs. Why would anybody spend money on packs on this final if they spent a lot of money on packs on the last final where this was the only legendary. What I'm trying to say is that this is a very common legendary now. The R390 GT1 road car, I know it's like the best uh, JPT car of this update that's non prize but it's also really common. So feel special that you own one, but don't feel too special. <laughs> I don't know. I felt, I felt mean saying that. I'm sorry. It's a fantastic price card. You should have it. It's amazing, but it is really common. And the main reason for that was because for the IDR final, it was a price card that everybody wanted besides me for some reason. I guess I'm weird like that, uh, but everybody wanted that. So everybody opened packs. And basically this was the only legendary you could get from that pack. So if you pull a legendary from those 15 packs, it was 100% going to be the R390 race car. So the chance are if you own the IDR, you own the R390 race car, unless you race in the European brackets where everything is super easy. Why am I take? Why I am shooting so many shots today. I'm sorry. I'm in a good mood. My hair is cut. I'm happy again. Uh, but anyway. That's hot garbage. Moving on now to priority five. Usually in priority five, we have basically a bunch of cars that aren't four wheel drive and four wheel drive is key for the rain. Some of these cars aren't even medium, so they're not gonna be viable for like three, uh, three out of the five track sets. And also what makes these cars even worse is that they don't, a lot of them don't have traction control. If they don't have traction control, that is a hindrance in the rain. You want to have, or at least it's prefer, you wanna prefer to have traction control and a ABS for the rain and four wheel drive. If you have that three, that's like the holy uh, trinity. But including those three, you also want good stats. Obviously, you want a car that handles well, low zero to 60. So these are the cars that basically miss the mark, right? Either they don't have performance tires, or they don't have four wheel drive, they don't have traction, or it's a combination of, you know, two of the three, or maybe even three of all the three. So cars in here, a bunch of rear wheel drive cars. These cars are fantastic. Some of them are fantastic, by the way, like the 370Z, fantastic. The high 
Hayabusa, fantastic. It's just that for this final, it's not great. Obviously, I'm also putting in a lot of the lower end all surface tire cars in here, uh, may namely like the XQ60 or the Subaru Ascent. Anyway, moving on now to priority four. Sorry, this was priority five. I I'm not sure if I said that was four, that's five. This is priority four. So under priority four, we're having basically a lot of four wheel drive cars that are also medium ground clearance. These are just four wheel drive performance tire Subarus that lose to higher RQ cars. So at this point, these are cars that have traction probably. Um, they have ABS, uh, they have four wheel drive. The main reason why they're in priority four is because they lose to other Subarus, other Ultra Subarus, other Epic Subarus. Um, and so because of that, I'm putting it in priority four. In here, I'm also putting the Epic all surface tire cars because I feel like if you can max out the Epic all surface tire cars, you can get some value in the final. Not a lot of value, but definitely more value than any car down here. Obviously, I'm also putting some of the better all surface tire um, ultra rares. So like the Subaru Forester and the X-Trail and the Outback all make the list. And then obviously some of the weaker ultra rare Subarus. Now, as you can see here, there are four epic Subarus under priority four. That's very bad. And that is mainly because although they have four wheel drive, all these four Subarus, they have the potential to lose to ultras because they don't have traction. Not only that they don't have traction, they have really bad on paper stats. I mean, at the end of the day, these RQ65s are borderline epics, you know? They still handle really badly, their 0-60s to aren't that great, and the MRAs are really bad. But really, when it comes to JPT, MRA isn't really a question to think about because all of these Subarus have no MRA anyway. Uh, so moving up now to priority three. Priority three is where we start to see the more competent cars. These are cars that have traction, that have ABS, that have four wheel drive. The stats are okay. So here are all the upper echelon. This is the upper echelon of all the ultra rares. We have, you know, um, standard tire ultra the only reason why is because it's rear wheel drive honestly if i'm going to put the m56 in priority three the q70 should move down to priority four it only makes sense that way to be honest guys this although it has standard tires it's not good i think yeah i have the vip down in priority four so it makes sense to put the q70 here as well um the main reason is they lose to the four wheel drive Subarus that handle really, really well. Like, you know, 95, 96, 97, 98. They're just not as good. They can hit those highs. So for the Infinity M56, I'm sorry. It had a lot of potential going into this, but it just underperformed. Once again, it's that rear wheel drive that really sets it down. If this had like, I don't know, 71 handling, but it was four wheel drive standard, I guarantee you it would be so much better. But unfortunately that isn't the case. Uh, but also besides that, we also have some of the the weaker epics once again you know these cars right here like the wrx and the the vag uh these cars all have traction control they all have abs the main reason why they're not higher up is because they just lose to the other epic subarus that also have abs and traction so at the end of the day is really just down to the on paper stats at this point uh so moving on now to priority two so priority two these are the cars that can win you the viper anything that's in priority two priority one you should be in a comfortable position for the Viper, depending on how hard your bracket is. If your bracket's pretty easy, you can probably get by with priority three cars as well. But it really gets really, you know, edgy, um, questionable when you're using priority four cars and below. But you know, priority three, you might get you the prize car. Priority two and above, you should be fine. So for priority two, we're talking about basically the really good epics uh, that don't have traction control. So like the Subaru Impreza STI S203 and the S204, they they both have amazing on paper stats. In fact, this Subaru, these two Subarus right here, they have the lowest zero to 60 out of all the Epic Subarus at 4.4. I mean, the 79s, uh, what is it? 4.6, 4.7, 4.7. These are 4.4, incredibly low. They handle okay, medium ground clearance and four wheel drive. The only reason why they're in priority two is like I said, they lack traction control. Uh, also some really good ultra rares in here as well. Just the upper, these are, these are the best of the best. These are the best of the best ultra 
rares, right? This Super Forcer SDI right here, a bit of a sleeper. Fantastic card, that little thing. Uh, and then obviously we have the RQ64s that handle really well. And of course, this has a very low 0 to 60, so that's going to be in here as well. We have the lower end of the high end epics, I guess. So the mid tier epics, basically, that all have traction control and ABS. I was actually pretty surprised to see that the Subaru Impreza RB320 had traction control and ABS. I thought that it would be like the S203 and the S204, which, you know, they have no, uh, you know, traction, but it does have traction, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but basically, that's going to be priority two. And last but not least, it's priority one, and then we'll talk about my top five. We have the Subaru Legacy BW. This thing is absolutely fantastic. I was telling people uh, when this event started, when I saw the track sets, if you have five Subaru Legacies, you can get the Viper. You can win this Viper with five Ultra Rares. Maybe you lose that track set at the zero to 100, but this thing is fantastic. This thing beats all of the lower and epic Subarus when you have the max, and it beats all of the mid-tier epic Subarus if you have the max. That's how good this thing is on the city streets, and also on all the twisty track sets, which is basically every track set in this final. So this car is absolutely fantastic. It's going to be the first one I'm going to put into my top five, because not only is it like a fantastic bang for your buck, it is so cheap to upgrade compared to an epic, and it's able to kill most epics. So because of that, that's a top five. Next up, are going to be basically the best of the best epic Subarus. All of these have traction, they all have ABS, they all handle really well, and they have lower 0 to 60s compared to their competition. Uh, in terms of top five, I'm going to recruit the Subaru WRX, the Subaru WRX STI S209 VAF, and the Subaru WRX STI Type RA-R VAB. Such long names. Uh, and then last but not least are going to be the Godzillas. All of these cars, they all have four-wheel drive. They all handle well. They all have low 0 to 60s. These are the cars that you want to use for that 0 to 100 track set. But they're also going to be super competent for any of the low ground clearance track sets. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why is this Subaru Impreza? Why is this Cosworth, which is the best Subaru uh, in Priority 2 and not in Priority 1? Because the main thing is this Subaru in this final isn't competing with other Subarus it's competing with the Godzillas because this has low ground clearance. So you're gonna put it on basically the non-City Streets track sets. All these Subarus, you're probably gonna put on the City Street track sets and you wanna put the Godzillas on the low. So basically this Cosworth is basically competing against the Godzilla. So because of that, I have to move it on to priority two because the Godzillas are in priority one. Uh, in terms of my top five, I would go for the GTR track edition and the GTR, uh, sorry, not this one, but the Egoist. So this is basically the perfect hand in my opinion. Honestly, it could be more perfect if you put in this one and you took out this but just because that this legacy is such a great bang for your buck I'm going to put it up here. So this is my top five hand. It's going to be the Legacy, the WRX STI VAF, the VAP, the GTR Track Edition, and the GTR Egoist. But all of these cars down here are definitely priority one as well. So basically, if you have any car, I would say in top five, priority one and priority two, you're going to be safe. You are going to win the Viper hands down easy peasy. Um, if you have any of the cars in priority three, then you know, it's a maybe, you know, you have a decent chance. But at the end of the day, anything down here here is going to be sketchy. Anything here, you're, gonna, you're not even going to get like tier four. Um, but anyway, with that said, I hope you found this video helpful. I wish you the best of luck in the ACRX final. I wish that to myself as well. This is the prize car I need to win. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Remember to stay safe, wash your hands, and blossom out. Peace.